We took action last night to stop a war. We did not take action to start a war. And I am ready and prepared to take whatever action is necessary. President Trump says a U.S. airstrike that killed Iran's top military commander was necessary to prevent an imminent attack on Americans. Meanwhile, protesters fill the streets of Tehran as some 3,500 American soldiers are now preparing to deploy to the Middle East. So how did we get to this point? Tension has been escalating after a rocket strike killed a U.S. contractor and wounded four service members. The U.S. responded with airstrikes of its own, leading militia supporters to perform, storm the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Then came that airstrike last night, killing Iran's top general. Lawmakers have largely been split on partisan lines, as you might expect, with most Republicans, like Georgia Congressman Doug Collins, praising the president, saying he's saved American lives. While Democrats, like Representative Hank Johnson, have accused the president of escalating the situation and acting without congressional authority. Caitlin Ross is taking a closer look at this controversy. Caitlin? The U.S. government is justifying last night's airstrike as an act of self-defense, with a senior State Department official telling reporters Soleimani planned to target U.S. diplomats and military personnel in Iraq, Syria and Lebanon. The president's actions against Iran have come, come under scrutiny before, with questions about whether they would fall under a law approved after the September 11th attacks. The law has become commonly known as the Authorization for Use of Military Force. According to the New York Times, it allows military response against whatever entities the president determines were involved in the attacks or who harbored people who were. After 9-11, that seemed to apply to al-Qaeda and its Taliban hosts in Afghanistan. But as years passed, presidents from both parties have stretched it to apply to other groups. Although the Constitution says Congress decides whether to declare war, executive branch lawyers have argued the president can unilaterally order attacks under a claim of anticipatory self-defense. There are also questions about international laws in cases like this. Some scholars claim the U.S. violated laws because Iraq did not grant us permission to carry out the attacks on its territory. Other experts say once invited into Iraq, the U.S. military has the right to defend itself from threats. There have been efforts in Congress to repeal parts of the authorization for use of military force, but so far they've either been stripped out or failed to gain enough support in both chambers. All right.